સ્વાગતમ નમસ્કાર કેમ છો આદાવાસ ગુડ આફ્ટરનુન આપ સભી કા પીઆરએલ કે અમૃત વ્યાખ્યાન મેં સ્વાગત હૈ અભિનંદન હૈ આપ સભી કો તિહત્તરમે ગણતંત્ર દિવસ કી બહુત બહુ શુભકામનાએ હાર્દિક બધાઈ એ વેરી વોમ વેલકમ ફ્રોમ મી અનિલ ભારદ્વાજ ફોર ધ પી આર એલ કામરેજ વ્યાખ્યાન દિસ ઇઝ ધ ટ્વેન્ટી સિક્સ વ્યાખ્યાન ઓફ ધ સિરીઝ ઓફ વ્યાખ્યાન્સ વિચ ઇઝ બીંગ ઓર્ગનાઇઝ એઝ અ પાર્ટ ઓફ પી આર એલ સેવન્ટી ફાઈવ ઇયર્સ ઓફ લેગેસી એન્ડ હિસ્ટ્રી ઇન ફંડામેન્ટલ ફિઝિક્સ એન્ડ સ્પેસ સાયન્સીસ established in the year 1947 by the father of indian space program dr vikram sarabhai the prls platinum jubilee coincides with india's 75 years of independence so it's a joint celebration of development of science and technology in india by prl under the banner of prl kamrit vyakhyan today we have yet another, another distinguished speaker vikram karta brigadier p ganesham vsm retired who is a founder president of pale uh, surjana from sekandrabad in telangana and he is going to speak on grassroots innovations mining the minds of masses we are fortunate to have him on india's republic day and he has been associated with indian army and now doing voluminous work in the area of social science so welcome brigadier ganesham to prl kamrit vyakhyan and i will now request uh, my colleague professor pallam raju to formally introduce the speaker professor pallam raju thank you professor bharadwaj uh, it's indeed a great pleasure and a honor uh, for me to introduce uh, today's uh, uh, speaker an ex army man brigadier pogula ganesham born in village bhumpalli of telangana he is an engineering graduate from the osman university and mba from delhi university uh, he is a specialist in armored fighting vehicles served the indian army with distinction for over 35 years including command of a battalion in kashmir in the thick of counter insurgency operations he was instrumental in developing a multi role weapon platform windy for the army which was uh, displayed on the republic day parade in 2004 he also obtained the patent for this vehicle which is the first patent uh, of the indian army for his distinguished services brigadier ganesham was awarded the vishisht seva medal by the president of india on the occasion of the republic day in 2005 post retirement from the army he served bharat dynamics limited as director of production from 2006 to 9 uh, he is a member of the advisory board of echs telangana and andhra pradesh uh, rajya sab rajya sainik board and he is formed a voluntary group called pallas rujana with like minded people to promote knowledge based activity in unified andhra pradesh in 2005 in the last 15 years he addressed over 9000 students in both the telugu states and walked over 4000 kilometers across the country in remote areas visiting 1200 villages he built a voluntary network of 3000 in the telugu states and they identified over 300 innovators and documented more than 2000 traditional knowledge practices in the last 15 years he conceived a new model grassroots entrepreneurship for disseminating the grassroots innovation which helps grassroots innovators in providing market and finance for manufacture his major initiatives include uh, gram uh, swayam samruddhi rural internship and uh, gyan show and capturing the creativity of the school children 
His mission is to highlight the significance of grassroots creativity for an equitable growth of the nation to the students, industry, scientific community, society in general, and the government. Yeah. Uh, yes. Over yes. to me. Yes. Yes. It's audible. Please go ahead. Garu, it's over to me. Yes, please. Oh, sir. Uh, that's, yeah. Brigadier Ganesh Garu, please start. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we, we lost your last few sentences. Oh, okay. Let me sir. let me share, please. Can you confirm that you can see the slides? It's, uh, yes, uh, make it full screen, please. I did it. Is it okay now? Yes, it is okay. Now. Uh, thank you, Mr. Badwaj, uh, Palam Razo, and uh, all other scientists. Uh, it's, a, it's a very auspicious day for the nation, for PRL, and especially for me, uh, to have got the singular opportunity of uh, uh, talking to the honorable scientist of PRL. And um, on a wonderful day, and the title is Amrita Vakyan, couldn't be a better word. So, wishing you all uh, uh, 73rd Republic Day uh, and more sustainable Republic we have in the country for the next generations. So, as uh, has been told, I'll be talking about uh, um, creativity at grassroots, uh, how we mine the minds of masses uh, during our journey. Uh, basically, we started this organization, Palle Sujana. Palle is village in Telugu, and Sujana is creativity. So we focus on the creativity of villagers in the informal sector. And uh, we believe that they have, they have uh, knowledge, though they have marginal money, may not be marginal in the creativity. In our journey, we also found them to be very creative, very humble, and uh, they are not sinks, but they are sources. I think that comes up only when we uh, look at them differently, like, like like the way we look at ourselves or somebody in our colleagues and look at them with a due respect, then I think the whole thing changes. So in our journey, what we um, what we do is we we go to learn from people. We walk. Walking gives a lot of uh, visibility. So we learn from people, but before that we unlearn ourselves. That makes sense to us because lots of uh, new things can be learned if you're open. And we try to learn the harmony between the nature and the people. How are they living? How have they been living? And what kind of a uh, bond they have where they coexist with interdependence. And, uh, and they accept what they see. And we don't. We ask questions. It's good to question, but also to understand why it is existing. Accept and question may be better Instead of questioning and then accepting it. Uh, I mean, this is why we're looking at it. That's the way we try to learn from the villagers. And uh, um, we find them working with Samvedana. I keep quoting some examples on the way. Samvedana is that you feel others' pain the way they feel. You may use word like apathy or something like that, but Samvedana is internalization of the pain. It's not feeling for somebody outside. So a beautiful word, I request if we can use it the way it is. And they're simple, humble, and uh, uh, I mean, the hospitality is wonderful. All this we experienced. 
And then we remembered work is Korean. Sometime back he said, and there's all the experiments in Gujarat. He says that the good partnership between the wisdom of the rural people and the skill of professionals and scientists like you is the best matrix, best method for India to go up and up in terms of human development. Uh, we believe it much more now what Dr. Korean said after seeing the, uh, the, the village creativity. Um, we also learned something new in our journey. Basically, in the next 45 minutes to one hour, my friends, I'd like to speak what we have learned from the villages in the last 15 years of working. And uh, that I'll share with you. And some of understands who we have, we share it the way they are. So we find that all of us live for happiness. Ultimately, and there's a goal. So how do we make happy? It's possible to evolve small, small ideas which would take away our pains, barriers, hurdles in our happiness. And when we do that, it enhances happiness, reduces the pain. It may not remove the pain, reduces the pain. And that happiness comes out. If we can do it for yourself, you can do it for people around. I think that's the simplest way of uh, uh, contributing the biggest possible. This is a, a, a something we thought of ourselves as a kind of madness we have in walking into the village and learning from them. Knowledge of the problems. Knowledge of the problems around you. Knowledge of the pains around you. Knowledge of the happiness, conscious of the happiness around you would feel some way than I, and some problems will internalize and try to solve them by your creativity. And when you solve it, it becomes innovation. Innovation is something which can be utilized, applicable, application. And when you innovate, when you innovate and that's used by people who are suffering from that particular problem, then their pain reduces, happiness comes up to that extent. If a house is happy, a society is happy, a village is happy, a nation is happy, I think the world is happy. So in this is another way of looking at the whole world and through the village, uh, in the creativity, we found this seems to be a possibility. Why innovation? It may be simple, mundane, but I'd like to share with them for sake of putting across a point. On the left side, you find uh, four people making the old lady in, but on the right side, the small innovation put in, the pain is reduced, people are happy, number of people are less. However small it is, innovation makes a difference. In the school, you'll find children uh, of different heights, but the tap is at one level. And it went on. All my schooling I saw, and most of you also, we never questioned. Because that's the way people felt it. Tap has to be at one level. The pipe is straight, or whatever it is. But one girl, Chaya in, in, in um, Gandhinagar, she asked the principal, why, sir, I'm short, I want a smaller tap. The principal was very considerate. He understood our pain and made multi-level taps. Now, when you see them, when the children uses the, use them, they have less pain. So they will regard, they have a higher regard for elders. And they will like to do something for next generation. So there is a lot uh, uh, society can feel better if you do that. Like Talukda, this boy, he saw his friend uh, uh, met with an accident and came to the classroom after the surgery. And uh, he saw him without upper limbs. But Swapnil just come and couldn't take it. How do my friend read without hands? So he worked hard and made a manual paste on it. Again, uh, an example of some way than feeling others' pain. And by using the feet, you can turn the pages. This is something head loads, uh, my friends, we have been seeing for ages before we are born and now even maybe we are after, after we go. We have not given a solution. It's painful for the head and neck, which are the basically soft portions. Not a very viable solutions we have given. Now here, Lohar, uh, he, he used the plastics as a rectangular shape and tied them to the waist and shoulders. And um, on the top, it doesn't touch the head, but stays one foot, one, one inch above the head. And on that, he puts this weight. 70 kg, 80 kg. Now, since this goes to the body, the load is to the body, not on the head and neck. So he saved up all the pain. And what exactly this boy did? He just changed the load center. That's all. 
it didn't change the outer bill. What a brilliant idea. All these 5,000 years, perhaps we have not thought of it, what this boy Lohar from Maharashtra thought of it. And many more. And this can be made individually and uh, the productivity, you know, the advantages of recurring productivity for the him, nation, world, and the society. The happiness, of course, there. There's no pain on the neck and uh, head. What's innovation? You all know, but uh, let me just repeat it. It is something original, should be, should be cost effective, affordable. That's more important. It should be useful. People are able to use it. Uh, it's not a uh, have a patent and keep it there. No, you should be able to use it. By using the beneficiaries, targeted beneficiaries should reduce, should get their pain reduced and feel some enhancement of happiness. There are lots of coal, coal in the cement codes over 11 times. I think. But going up is quite a problem, and uh, we can't get out the cement electrical poles, but we give it nothing. Uh, this boy, Nandam Tirupatirao, he, he's been working in the industry. He made a small climber with a that clips out of the thing. He made a Z shape, uh, a, a one rod bent uh, properly, and that he uses it. And uh, and is being a unmet need, uh, though he has a, a design patent. He initially supplied for one year, then I said, how can he supply the whole world? So he made open, open source and shared all the drawings, everything with people and now all countries are doing it. Fortunately, just for information, he also got the best prize in Asian countries for displaying this innovation. But what a painkiller it is. What a pain removal. Efficiency goes up, pain reduces. The insecurity of people going up the pole it reduces drastically, the family feels more comfortable and safer. This is a scene uh, in our childhood we have seen, and this is what we have given to villages, and we're very proud of this hand pump. Of course it was. But, uh, uh, but it was only one is to one operation. And after giving this pump, there is no improvement. We have not done version one, version two, version three, like we do it for various vehicles or softwares or various other industrial goods. Somehow we forget to improve what we give it to the people. And one is to one went on and quite a long line and uh, people missed their water sometime. And the waste is a water with two each pipe. Uh, all this we're seeing, but I think we're not taken seriously about it. And children also thought this is the only thing our elders can do. So uh, one, girl, one girl had a problem. She got late to the class, the teacher punished. And she went home and cried in front of the parents. Parents uh, felt her pain, internalized their pain. The father came back after a week to the, in Jharkhand it happened week after week to the school. Talked to the principal, he said, sir, let me do something for the children. Let them not suffer. Humiliated, uh, humiliated by the, in the school because they do mistake. So he made this. One is to seven. So simple, so effective saves water with taps. I think such things can come only with some way that our parents felt the humiliation of the girl. Uh, now, now, this is where there's inertia in the system not to look at what we have given. We're very happy because they don't complain. The people in the villages don't complain. They don't know whom to complain. But it's our responsibility to see that even without complaining, people should be happy. It's somewhere that um, uh, sensitivity we need to uh, address much more, I guess. So who can be innovator? This girl saw her grandfather standing on the queue and I was tired. He said, why my grandfather was tired? There's no seating arrangement. She did not curse, curse the system. She did not curse anybody. She said, let me do something for my grandpa. So on the trolley bag, which he was uh, carrying, he made a folded chair. What she did may not the best solution, but she addressed the pain around her. She saw it. And that's a beautiful quality of people. They want to, she wants to see her grandpa happier. And she achieved, achieved it. What, what matters is not the money, not the system, everything, but the human need of reducing the pain is what this girl did. It. Saidula is a, from Bihar, northern Bihar. Watch this short wow. video.
so wonderful. This old man never went to school. He says, the pride, he says, my technology. How many of us really target ourselves to create technologies? How many of us really encourage next generation to do it in the schools and colleges and later? I think that's what uh, is required. Everyone has a capability. They need a big, little boost, a little bit of pat on the back and encouragement. This man in the village in Champaran, and he wanted to cross to other village every day for work. Uh, but there was only one private boat which used to erratically coming up. He was upset. He waited 65 years, no improvement in his status. So when he was helpless and when he was uh, frustrated, Saidullah like got angry. And when people get angry, some people become insurgents, but Saidullah like became innovative. And he said, let me find out. Let me do something for it. And absolute dark journey. They don't know where to go, where to start, how to do. But they do it. And there were three and a half kgs of total weight of four boxes the cycle could uh, float. Amazing. But he created a technology. Now, that's what I think we take a cue from people. Why aren't we creating technologies, all of us? When he can do with nothing, absolutely nothing. And I think we are blessed. Some Something has to be done in this regard. A serious thought is to be required in this regard. This is Meghalaya. Most of you must be aware of it and some of you must have been. I was fortunate to be on the top of this uh, living bridge. It's living because made of roots. Older it is, better it is, stronger it is. Not like our bridges where when they get old, they become sort of weaker. This is a community innovation. It's not individual innovation, but we feel it's innovation. One or two generations together grew the uh, roots and guided them to make a bridge, not only one single, but double bridge. So you have seen, my dear friends, innovation can be done by a child, an old man, a community. Anybody can make it. As long as you have that some way of understanding and doing it. So it's not necessary that we have to do where to make the facilities and all the resources. But this is our observation in our journey. Just to touch upon what you all know is that the innovation ecosystem of a nation consists of two major elements. One is public innovations, where you are part of that, and um, where the public funded laboratories, research projects they take up. And second, the private innovations. Now, public innovations, they have done their bit, uh, but the way I am now 70 plus, so I feel that the majority of the problems of the majority of people somehow for the reasons of constraint, priority or constraint of resources, public innovations would not address it. And they're massive, there's so many in the village. Every village has problems, every livelihood has problems. Uh, it may not be possible actually, but somehow the gap remains that majority of the problems, the majority of the people, public innovations could not address it. Private innovations, they address the problems, but they are business people, so therefore they address where the money comes to them. So. Business is the bottom line. Again, these poor people or the majority of the people are left out mostly. We also have 26 crore children in the schools, but somehow as a nation, we feel that they're not uh, mature enough to find solutions to the problems. It may not be true. Our experience is so differently. Every child lives in the problems across the geography of the nation. They watch the pain around them. They feel the pain, their mothers, father, sister, uncle, everybody the pain. When they see the pain, I'm sure their creativity always gives some suggestion to uh, the problem, the problem around. But we have ignored it. Maybe we have to reconsider and see how we can tap the children's ideas. Then uh, when nothing works in the top, the ecosystem doesn't work effectively. So the village people, as I said, they become angry and they become innovators and they can anyone. It can be a farmer, a child, anyone. And these are the oddballs. They try to create even world by giving them uh, solutions to the problems. They are uh, the rebels and they want to build their capacity. And I told some ways they are based. They are unengineered, frugal, made from local materials, local technologies, local problems, local solutions, and local customers. We find villages as source, not sinks, uh, as long as we respect them. Uh, when, uh, I, I, I tell this story whenever I uh, speak of, about these people. Uh, we were walking in uh, Shodayatra in 
Vishakhapatnam district once in the Araku Valley. Uh, my friend from France was uh, walking along with me and, and uh, we, we found a head of sheep coming in front of us. And he looked at it, he says, Brigadier, they all look same to me. But you think Shepherd will do distinct, uh, differentiate? I said, should be. He is good at it, but we are not. So he says, no, no, I let me ask Shepherd whether he can do it or not. So we waited for the shepherd to come behind the sheep. And when he came, uh, I, I posed the question to him in the language he understands. And that guy gave a good smile. And he, he borrowed a book from my friend, Frenchman, French journalist, opened the book and showed the letters. He's showing the letters saying that all of them look same to me. Now, this man has a beautiful response to our question saying that what I know is I, you don't know and what you don't know, I don't know. And what you know, I don't know. So he put straight away all of us on the same level. Now, that's the beauty of a human being. Everyone knows what they know and very well. But if we ignore what they know and we think only we know everything, then there's a problem comes up. So when you start respecting people, then they start trusting you. When they trust you, then the communication comes up. And that's the way we found that villages are source, not, uh, not sinks. Uh, more from less. More from less. For many, this is something which nature's principle initiated by Gandhi and reiterated by uh, Dr. Marshall Kerr many times, uh, you know him better. So uh, this is, these people use this principle always. And everywhere, as you go forward, I show you more innovations, kind of link principle of more from less for many. It's like a seed putting in the, put in the earth and a, a tree comes up with so many leaves and fruits and flowers. So input is less, output is more, more from less and used by many. Now, in technology, we don't find input is less. Input is more and output is less. So there is a, uh, we need to have a trade-off between the natural uh, principle, the activity with nature and activity with technology so that we leave something for the future people. Because technological activity, deductive, input is more and output is less. So when you deductive, the sources started depleting over a period of time. And future generations may not really like the way we do it. The nature's principle is, is additive. And that's a duty we have observed. And most of them follow this principle. We all know Hanibi Network, which is, uh, in fact, it is uh, very closer to you in Ahmedabad. That Professor Anil Gupta, uh, ex-IIM Ahmedabad, has started since uh, 90. And it's spread over 30 odd countries in the world. We are part of it. Uh, we, it's a virtual and voluntary. And we get a nameless, faceless person to network, like all, all the innovators. I'll show you now some of them. And uh, by, by showcasing their knowledge and giving value to their knowledge, we get them a name, fame through their knowledge. And it's a reciprocal, responsible, mutually respectful knowledge exchange. Knowledge exchange is what is, uh, we do. Uh, I'm not very sure we have been taught knowledge exchange uh, formally somewhere. Uh, but uh, we have learned so much knowledge. This is something different field of knowledge. Exchange. We are res responsible and reciprocal and we have to respect their rights and uh, handle the knowledge such a way that they are not hurt. So, so much of learning for us. So, what we do uh, broadly uh, is, uh, this is what Anibi Network does and Palachodana is part of that. Uh, we scout knowledge and we believe that knowledge has no legs and we have legs, so we have to go to the knowledge. We walk up to the places. And when we go to their place, the understanding of the knowledge is much better uh, than, than they come and talk to us in a very small module. And the next part of documentation, my dear friends, is the most challenging part because this is not an issue in the formal system because unless you have a project, no project, nothing is sanctioned to you. So you start with documentation and keep on adding to it all your observations, experimentations, trials, and other things, and finally you make a report. But it's totally different here. The innovation is ready. They're using it. We identify after it is, it is in, 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 in use. And benefit, benefit is being accrued with the people. And this time we go, identify that as a good innovation for the lot of public to use it, then we document it. And what are the forms available? 
what the documentation available there is nothing regulatory there is nothing so we use national innovation foundation documentation which is a government uh, uh, autonomous body from the dst and uh, uh, and we ask questions the innovator doesn't know so it's a it's a blind game for us to connect uh, to the formal system and documentation if you don't do it is knowledge is not properly connected to the society so all that benefits entitlements or understanding of its comprehension of its innovation all will go awry if you don't do a good job of documentation that's the fine very difficult part most challenging part and then of course nurturing and dissemination is very important any knowledge identified but not shared with the people who need it has got no meaning to society so dissemination horizontally from land to land farmer to farmer technology commons or if required take up vertically give value and bring it back in a most affordable manner all these things we try to do it and we have to connect it to formal system through the documentation for patenting recognition awards and any fund or any metrics support engineering support we found that they follow these three simple principles in innovation knowing feeling and doing um yeah, when, when we don't feel it most of them actually in the problems but when it's not in the problem then watch the neighbor in the problem and they try to feel it so that their comprehension of the problem is so deep that what they do is almost right a few examples of that the walker uh, we see it is a four fixed wall but when one has to go up the staircase or come down the walker is not useful because the fixed legs so there we need support so this is something perhaps not made out of knowing feeling doing now if the same walker is uh, the front legs are adjustable then the man can go up by shortening the legs while going up front legs and the coming down he can uh, extend the legs to the right side right level so this uh, uh, you may like to agree that this is made out of knowing feeling and doing that's quite possible then we have this uh, harvester um, i think it came in early 90s to us and is given to the farmers of wheat and paddy as a huge looking machine uh, and when the, the harvester field looks like this what you see on the screen long stops of 8 to 10 inches remain after harvesting and uh, uh, whatever is cut the grass piece left over is thrown to the field which you see between the stuffs and the seeds are taken into grains are taken to the harvester so three um, uh, things happen which bother the farmer a what do they do with stuffs um uh, they can't have a next crop and biodegradation is not so easy they have to somehow get rid of it there's so many methods they are using which are not very good like burning is not very good at all and secondly uh, the, the even plowing out for three four time tractor being used is cost them and may not be good for the earth the when they cut the seeds in the field five quintals per acre per average falls down in the field that's the loss to the farmer the loss to the nation Five quintals per acre. Now imagine what happens if the uh, uh, national level a crore or two crore acres are used. Now this is the uh, drawbacks of the uh, machine harvester, and because he gives only the grains, the grass is denied to the farmer, which is also a legitimate crop. Every farmer gets grass and grains, but here in this machine, grass is not available to him. Or if he has to cut all the potato, he got another baler and extra cost. All those things have to be done. But why? Why? Why we? Why it causes such a loss to the, the farmer is something I didn't see much of studies on this harvester and its its negative effects, positive effects we know about negative effects of it. But one farmer, Surendra Prasad, and he he thought of doing some modification because he waited long in 2011 and 12. He worked hard and made a Combined harvester modified it such a way that you see below the harvester there are no stubs. It cuts at two to three inches, and then takes the entire uh, uh, straw or the stack with the, the seeds into it inside the harvester, and the seeds are cut inside the harvester. So the grass is separated, like you see the grass is being given to the farmer separately, his least made crop, and the grains are given separately. So this is a simple modification he did it, but an uneducated farmer could do what uh, I think we all fail to recognize, or we have missed out on that. So thereby, the, the all the losses which you have counted 
or, 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 or uh, you know, mitigated to a great extent. So we also seen that these people in the villages, they describe the pain and then identify the problem. I'll give an example of this. This is a ASU machine. This is ASU process in Putin politician in Telangana. Now the lady sits down like this before any sadi in the Pujampali gets onto the loop, first step, where she moves her hand across four feet uh, at the stems and winds the thread as per the design. And then what it what happens is here, yeah, uh, she has to move her hand for 9,000 times. And that's enough a lot. And uh, six hours it takes. There's a pain on the shoulder. So one boy Malaysian saw his mother doing this uh, for, uh, for uh, right from childhood, his childhood, and she used to complain, better mera shoulder karab, shoulder pain all right. So he watched and did a 14 minutes school dropout of sixth class standard. So let me reduce the pain of my mother. And it took seven years to make a machine. And what did he do? He described the pain. He says pain is in the shoulder. So how did the pain come? It's come because she moves in moving her hand. So he says somebody moves the hand, my mother's pain will go away. So simply analyze the description of the pain gave him the problem definition of someone should do that. And that's what they, sorry. And that's what he made a machine which looks like this, where without attendance, uh, the entire after process is done one and a half hours and the mother is completely relieved of the tragedy. So this is a terrible because she had to do besides the normal core. So that's the way they go happily and um, uh, and move along to reduce the pain of people around. This is another way, there's a very simple pushing out from Gujarat again, Anjibai. Cycle movement, rear wheel, pushing the cycle provides them energy for spray. And you see it's such a good spray. He can afford the entire thing and, and also give it to his friends. And he can do whenever he wants. The horizontal bar will move up and down so that the height of the plant can be, uh, so the height of spray can be adjusted as per the plant. Again, if you just look back to MLM principle, maybe it, it fits in. Now the tractors, or we have very big, big tractors we have seen, but here you see somebody made a tractor of six and a half hours And uh, he used it for up to 10 acres, all kinds of uh, farming activities, including carrying, and the various uh, like sowing, then weeding, then harvesting, all kinds of the harvesting was not there, but all other things could be done with the machine and the trailer about 800 kg carries. Now, if six and a half horsepower tra tractor can use up 10 acres, why we have 35 horsepower? Why we have this, this appropriateness? I don't think we built in for the small and marginal farmers. Is that maybe required so that uh, affordability increases? And so as the productivity. This is selling at one lakh plus with the attachment, different attachments. We give uh, 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 this uh, trip irrigation pipe, the nozzles we give it, hundreds of meters to farmer at 90% subsidy because they found it very important, saving the water. But we don't give them a winder. So when the crop is over, they keep pulling with the hand and it gets coiled and nozzles break, pipe breaks, because hundreds of meters. <coughs> so the farmer loses the damage. Is the, uh, so this boy, in the absence of any winder given to them, he made a winder with using the kitchen utensils. You see the dhakkans and the bhakkans. And he keeps on winding comfortably without any damages and unwinds it for laying out in the fall for a second next time. This is a cedar, manual cedar made by a farmer where, um, I'll show you the video, yeah. Where a few people pull it, one or two people can pull it. And it makes seven furrows. No other power, just by pulling. And then also drops the seeds at the uh, specified distance as we pre designated and it also closes furrow. So furrow making, seed dropping, and closing all done by pulling. And this seven row machine can do a hectare per day with two or three people maximum. And they say about 25-30% seeds. They use for padding. We use this in the uh, eastern Andhra Pradesh and uh, agency area. It was 500 acres we have done it. 
so much saved. You save all the uh, about four to five thousand rupees of transplantation, as free transplantation, all those costs. Millions of people, crores of people work in the sun in the fields. And the daytime is totally open to them. And when they go back, they get tired, stressed. And I don't think they will have really eager to laugh and uh, have dinner with family. We've not done much to that. But this boy Shanmukar also saw the pain in them and made a shade for farm workers. It can be opened up uh, in about 10 minutes time and two poles both sides, uh, then put wheels both sides. And then after working under this five feet, 10 feet shade, you push it forward so that the shade you know, uh, travels along with you. It's so simple, but I think it addresses the intangible needs of the people. It's not the, not the physical need, not the uh, monetary or labor, the intangible need, which is also important because productivity enhances, happiness comes up. Maybe some of them laugh in the evening, smile in the evening with this family. So even these issues also, I think, in a, at some level is very important for us. Urea dropper is a very amazingly simple innovation, which uh, so what is what is trying to say? He, he was throwing, he was uh, you know, dispensing urea with hand and not exactly the right place, right quantity. If he has to bend and do it, it's a problem for him. And he was not happy kind of wastage of urea and not effective way of dispensing. So he made us use of a small bottle. With this innovation, I'm sure you've identified by now, he could locate where to drop the urea and he could control how much to drop the urea. And there are two critical factors. We have not given anything to the people so far. And I'm sure people are much making, but what we have seen is amazing innovation, simple. And he did for himself and even his village people didn't know what he did. When we identified him, walked into the village, saw it, and uh, and we, the village people were seeing it for the first time. So 35% urea is saving, imagine, with no investment for the innovation he made in the village. When we asked him, Pichaya, can I take the innovation? He said, please take this, I'll make one more by tomorrow. That's kind of simple innovation. So there is similar way, Mahesh has made a, uh, another way of uh, dispensing innovation, uh, urea, same way. He, he find, found a method made in the village where he locates the plant, locates the place and controls the quality by one push, some quantity, one more can have two push. All can be made. This is something when people put maize or a groundnut or something in the earth, uh, the seeds have to be dropped, they bend, put the soil aside, put the seed and close it. The bending is a very big problem and it, labor takes long time and painful. Now here, what this boy did is a, a, a simple way. Put a use a tube where the tube is pushed into the earth, the level you want, and put a seed, and then lift it. The clip at the bottom opens up and seed drops in. The arch in front can be utilized for space between the two seeds. So, so instead of, you know, one lady can do one acre a day comfortably. Otherwise, even five ladies together could not handle one acre. There's lots of weed in the uh, uh, paddy comes up after the, you see the grains coming up. And there's a time pulling the weed of different variety of the seed is important, but pulling out is difficult that time with a lot of uh, 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 seed tillages come in that. Now, if you don't pull out, the quality of your grains when harvested will be uh, low. Now, this boy made a, something with the local materials, it's no cost at all, but 100 rupees. And he made something where the Farmer can walk in, don't bend, just clip, uh, pluck it, and then pull out. And that's the way. He's also got an award at the national level in Calcutta. Very simple. But by doing so, the farmer get a higher price. Otherwise, 15, 20 percent of such weeds will affect the quality of the grain. This is the multi-purpose weeder where one framework of the weeder is used for a 12 inches row width. Or by changing the wheels or changing the rear attachment, you can use it for up to three feet, you can use it. So engine is five hours per, but the framework is such a way that any crop farmer grows for a, a road distance of 12 inches or uh, three feet, he can use the same framework with the same power. 
a lesser degree of a fast standardization has been made so that every crop is not by all the innovation my dear friends is mostly on the emphasis is on people because they want to reduce their pain and give them happiness and once they identify the problem and I definition problem definition and then the search for technology um that is a but the present day children i see in the schools and colleges they have a technology therefore they solve want to solve a problem that really may not be the best way to do it if we, have, we also have tremendous amount of traditional knowledge in the villages like this leg was to be amputated on the left side you see but some herbal solution we identified in the village uh but that could have put the leg was safe so imagine we have such knowledge where we can save legs cutting legs is easier but retaining the leg is most difficult and this mastitis is a big problem you all know antibiotics will get into the milk and withdrawal period is long but no farmer waits for the withdrawal period of antibiotics he takes the milk and supplies to the people it gets mixed up centrally and that the consumption of antibiotics as per dr sunita narayan is higher for animals than the human beings in the country but this boy rajana this boy rajana has made a herbal solution which can be used with the warm water external application only and third day you can take the milk so we must look for such safe solutions which doesn't affect the health of society and uh, and must focus on them promote them work hard on them because you're spending much money on the health issues we can as well spend on the right uh, solution for the animals this has been uh, patented and uh, as and was given award by the president of india now we give motorcycles to the people in the village but uh, it went for roads not for the cross country and the cross country they go puncture and they push it here you see this boy uh, pandu has pushed a motorcycle for about 10 kilometers in, in his uh, journey one day and he was upset what to do so he developed a solution which puts into the tube and puts the tube in the tire and fills air and now when he moves on the nails starts counting there are 30 nails on this very operated on this and no puncture in the wheel so what he did is he, he, he because of the solution he put in that the moment it op opens to the air it gets rubber it makes a rubber in the loss of air is less so what he made is a pain killer reduce the pain of the people now he has got a recognition uh, uh, from the government of india president of india and also lots of uh, you know seven states he is selling and uh, there is a only for rural areas it's a beautiful uh, instrument but very cheap 250 rupees a tube that's all tube tube is is motorcycle to new tube and he puts the liquid fills the liquid and gives it so 500 rupees 3 years villages with bikes have no problem so we also have to address the technology related problems the village uh, uh, poses to the people we give technology all right but is it relevant to them that's where i think we have to pay more attention to avoid such pains animals are uh, are made to are uh, sent for abattoir because we don't like them Uh, they don't work for our i don't give milk but their rejects can do a lot and we all aware of it the pots is something very interesting is being done across the country now how uh, just give them a dye and they will use the uh, tank to make pots and put mud in that put a plant in that an entire pot can be put with the plant in the earth without discarding anything and so simple so useful and also prefer the plant for the environment but they need to be helped in terms of a dye similarly the cremation uh, demands about 5 to 6 quintals of wood for each body and in our country i believe over 40000 per day are cremated now we cannot stop this cremation or burning but we can have alternative like here you find uh, uh, logs with dung are being made logs with dung can be used in place of normal wood they can be used they can be used in place of normal wood and the wood can be saved a lot and carbon value can be adjusted more can be there in a village there are every month one death average they need 5 quintals per month 60 quintals a year each animal gives 10 to 12 kg per day imagine you can keep it for the whole year and whole village is taken care of extra they have they can send to the towns 
but they need a compressor for this. They need some technology for small training for this. And all this we have to make it affordable excellence. That's very important because people, uh, the, the, uh, if, you have, if you make it excellence linear to the cost, then that will be very difficult. Uh, they will never be able to produce excellence, thereby their productivity is less. And what they give it to is also not excellent. How do we consume? How do we utilize it? So in the interest of overall society, there's a need to, all of us designers and scientists to see that, can we provide affordable excellence to them? I think it's possible. We have to make it a design constraint for us. Washing machines, dishwashers, the big problem everywhere. Everybody's working for it. And the busy food is going to change. Maybe in Corona, everybody is getting from outside, but still the middle class and low class people, they are still suffering. Now that's why he made a small uh, 5,000 rupees worth of machine, Shanmukhara, where uh, the lady takes there, rotates it, and then soap water comes in. After uh, dissolving is over, then takes the next step where fresh water comes in. Solar sprayers, I'm seeing very, very good. It's an older one, but we have found it. We sold almost 5,000 pieces. Simple VEDA, there are so many types of VEDAs have come, all made for customized crops or very simple, everything is open, but they are using regular, you know, a lot of, this weaver from Telangana has gone to at least 12 states in the country. Uh, so farmers are, uh, want mechanization in the absence of labor or other issues they have. And one of the prominent outstanding feature of, we have observed with innovations is that there is no post-sale activity, almost zero. Because whatever the technologies they use, they are easily understandable, usable, maintainable, customizable by anybody in the country because local mechanic or nearby town mechanic can happen to do it. So what a great stress on the environment is taken off uh, when, when the product is sold and thereby the relation between the buyer and the seller stops there. And that's the beauty of the innovations. The overall lifetime cost of an equipment is very less in this equipment compared to many of our technological uh, solutions. Uh, we have this uh, windmill. Uh, yeah, this, this is uh, typically made in the village. But what it uh, helps is not the, uh, doesn't bring power, it brings water to the farmer. What farmer wants is water. And all this is made with the wood, bamboo, nails and sheets, so simply using it. And uh, hardly any cost, but it serves the farmer. I'm sure you have seen, my friends, there's so many uh, uh, SDGs, Sustainable Development Goals. All these words, which have seven words are there, in the, these innovations which you have seen, not because the innovators knew about these words, but when you work for people, for humans, emphasis on the humans, all these things automatically surfaced in it, factored in it. So we do dissemination, uh, very methods we have. Uh, magazines and show the atras and the uh, different center. A lot of exhibitions we conduct and the formal system like today we are interacting. This will be dissemination for innovators. Something like existing, you will talk to somebody whatever a critical view or a supporting view, whatever the view. But you should you should talk about these innovations, and we do for the masses, for the student, so they understand that humble people can innovate. Why not they? With all the privileges they have and the entrepreneurs and other people, so the dissemination and the formal support comes to them. So that there is a very interesting uh, uh, social activity started by Pranil K. Gupta. Uh, uh, I'm sure some of you know about it, but it's a path unknown and learn from four gurus. And uh, we do in Andhra Pradesh in Telangana, a three days yatra. We did 39 so far every quarter. In the pandemic, we could not do the display of innovation. Dissemination was not possible. Exhibitions were not possible. But the work in the villages went on. So what we did is we conducted weekly webinars. And we're fortunate because, because of the online classes, each farmer, everybody had some uh, phone, smartphone where children used to learn classes. So that we leveraged the existence of the phone. And we uh, saw that farmers and innovators talk to each other every week digitally. And they've learned. And we managed to showcase, scout, document, and showcase 200 innovations. 52 weeks and that's a that's an amazing uh, innovation nothing stopped the village either the production or the regeneration or the innovation so we gave a lot of uh, all the volunteers keep on writing awards for uh, our innovators where we find a lot of merit in them and in telangana and andhra palestina volunteers could get so many things 
and today we expect the Padma Sri, but did not come. Maybe next time you'll get it. So we also do some uh, grassroots innovation, dissemination marketing because these village people cannot do it. They don't know how to handle finance and market. So we leave it to them the manufacture and quality and disp disp uh, dispatch. Rest all things centrally done by grassroots entrepreneur. And we have such a variety of products. We have feeders, seeders, play, uh, seeds, pole climbers, assistive devices, amazing animal, human, everything we have. So far, over 100 device, uh, innovations we are selling in the market for the last five years. And the turnover has been extremely good. And over 30 odd manufacturing facilities in the villages are available for these innovators, which we managed to get through the help of society. And some, uh, I'll, let, I'll take a uh, few minutes more. The unmet needs like uh, uh, there's no transport in the village. Bail Garden, Nikal Gaya, or Kushnaya Uda. So, uh, tractor trolley is not a transport, actually, it's very costly to get them. So, this boy made a trolley six feet by five feet by three feet and four wheels, and it can be driven by a moped, which is available in the village, driven by a bike, again available, and a tractor available. So, thereby they can do anything what their agriculture implements or the grains, anything they can do it. This fills the unmet need of the people. And even people use it for taking care of the labor in the fields and back home by using the bike. They also use a harvester, weeder. They use the weeder. Weeder is supposed to be pulled by, pulled to the field because two wheeler, but he put a trailer and made it a four wheeler. And villages don't have lifters, no cranes. Everything has to be done manually. Six and a half lakhs villages don't have cranes, and we are we are not concerned about it. Maybe we're not thought of it. This boy made a small crane, and uh, which can be uh, it's attached to the track tractor. And the crane is only the green portion, my dear friend. This boom is the only crane, and it lifts 800 kgs up to 15 feet. And since attached to the tractor, maneuverability is so easy and available in the village. Now. The cost is 8,000 rupees, that's all. But a facility which is causing a lot of non productivity in the village because of delays and not available people are getting hurt or damaged during transport, all will go away. Such a simple looking innovation, I feel it's a very magnificent one which contributes a lot with no investment whatsoever for the nation. Electric vehicles, again, transporters can be made. One innovator made for 1 lakh rupees. It's 40 kilometers speed and 50 kilometers uh, in the endurance per day and four to four and a half hours the charging. Now such innovation is needed for transporters and also uh, environmental friendly. Now this is the field, uh, paddy field, and you don't find the weed in this. And not because it will be weeded by machine. No, a herbal weedicide identified by Dr. Mr. Chandrasekhar from a village, Kalhasti, that was used before transplantation in the uh, field. And that's all, no weed comes up. Imagine a herbal weedicide can make a farmer's life better by no, uh, the paints of weed is not there. This year we tried in 5,000 acres in Andhra and Telangana and Karnataka. Maybe next year this will come into a big game changer is going to come. Welding, then the villages today, all houses are made with the, nobody making with the mud and wood, but they're making with steel. But where is the welding? But this boy started to make a portable welding machine, arc and gas, takes it there and helps the people. People are happy to pay because it comes to them. So we have uh, uh, lots of things about uh, innovations. We also start asking problems from the people when they give problem. We post this to the innovators. We have grassroots innovators and they find solutions. And the last six months we could find some of them. But every week we get two, three problems from the people. We address with the help of grassroots innovators. So uh, lots of work for innovations, 2,500 uh, anyway. And we need a formal system. This innovation doesn't help in enterprise investment. And for that formal system needs to give a lot of activity like mentoring and re-engineering, uh, dissemination and taking, make, giving them a patents where applicable, uh, or low interest loans or a reduced tax, all those things can be given. Uh, encourage PMEGP loans can be given so that they can start making workshop in the village and give some employment. So much can be done. We just listed out. I'm sure you appreciate more. And uh, the grassroots innovations, they call it inclusive 
but nothing is inclusive because they are from different world. They don't understand the language, don't understand the systems, and you call them to towns and cities, they feel unsafe, uh, insecure. But is there a way we can make them a separate category in every initiative of the state, like startup or a stand up or whatever? Every way you say, okay, 10% of the resources MR for grassroots category, and to be handled by respective states in their language, and all the trainings can be done by central government. That becomes really inclusive. But today it is not so. A lot of challenges, I am sure by now you understand, because it is not a very lucrative uh, product which gives high ROI. So therefore, business community, as it stands, is not very attracted and doesn't look exotic to them. And similarly, ROI is least because affordability is important point. Uh, so the investors don't come forward so easily. So the present model of uh, uh, getting products into the system are, is not really applicable to grassroots innovators. We are developing a new model. We did some work on it, but I think more institutions can come forward and try to develop a model which is workable for grassroots innovations, where we go to them, then they come to us. There's so many macro challenges, I'll leave it for today. And uh, uh, this is what Mahatma Gandhi said, you all know it, I just repeat, production of masses, production by masses is the only answer for the nation to grow and wealth gets distributed. So as scientists, trade-offs are very important for you. Whenever, I'm sure you take a lot of trade-offs when you make a project decision. Now, this is some of the trade-offs when we talk of for the masses, do we trade off accuracy and affordability? Which one you trade off? For the uh, design simplicity, which one you take off? Each one has different connotations. Desires and deserving your efforts, the, the societal efforts we put on the desires are deserving. Now, such kind of uh, trade offs, I think we all have to consider at some stage so that we do justice to the people. So, uh, my dear friend, there is so much uh, uh, you can do if you want to. If you convince that that the wonderful knowledge exists in our people, which is our own knowledge, Atman Irbhar, our own knowledge, local knowledge, and if instead of replacing the village knowledge, we identify their strengths, identify knowledge, and add on to what they don't have, I think that's a way beautiful collaborative development will come in and synergies will develop between villages and the formal system. I listed some of them, and the, one of the things I always recommend is identify unmet needs of institution like yours in the 50 kilometers around you, 100 kilometers around you, and do unmet needs, you or somebody can always uh, address them, and that much happiness comes to them. So uh, a story which uh, uh, is, uh, you know, a few years back, people depend on the forest mostly, and they used to walk empty baskets, walk to the forest empty baskets, get the forest produce, walk back with heavy baskets home, and then eat some, consume some, and share with others or barter with others. No, but Raja did not like the people getting, you know, getting, walking all the way back with the heavy uh, baskets. He said, let me do something. So he constructed pedestals on the way so that they can slip down the weight and sit for some time and move on. So what did Raja uh, thought of doing was that when he could not remove the problem, he reduced the pain. So my dear friends, we all have the ability, uh, if observe a problem, we also have the ability to solve the problem or reduce the uh, pain of the problem by some percentage, 30, 40, 60, 70. And if we can start doing that all of us instead of waiting the whole problem to remove, the world becomes that much happier. And uh, we also feel happy for the contribution we make. Thank you very much. I'm sorry for overshooting and uh, uh, I'm, I'm ready for the questions. Thank you very much. And thank you very much, uh, uh, Brigadier Ganesham, for this wonderful and fascinating talk uh, fascinating experiences actually that's what you shared and with the wonderful work that you are doing uh, in reducing the pain and also maybe removing pain for you know several uh, i'm sure that there are uh, uh, there are questions and i'll request you know my uh, colleague dr vinit uh, to to conduct the question answer dr vinit please yeah thank you very much professor palam raju and uh, thank you very much uh, uh, Brigadier Ganesham for your wonderful talk and it was really inspiring to see so much of innovation coming from the rural areas and, and uh, really interesting to note was that if uh, people living in village they have some requirements they will not stop or wait for somebody to innovate for them but they will take the first lead instead so thank you very much for such a wonderful talk.
So now what, what I will do is that we have uh, some audiences on the WebEx platform and also as well as on the uh, YouTube platform. So I would like to ask the audiences on the uh, WebEx platform to ask you the questions directly. So uh, the floor is open for the question and answers. Okay. Can I ask a question? Yes, yes, Professor Deshpande. Yes, you can go ahead and ask a question. Yeah. Uh, Brigadier Ganeshan, uh, thank you very much for a uh, wonderful talk. Very informative. Uh, I have uh, one question. And the question is that uh, the innovations which you showed, like bicycle or a chair with the suitcase that girl had prepared for her grandfather, or uh, walker or urea dispenser or seed dropper so these all of these are in a way for reducing the pains of uh, people right so obviously one would want to reduce the pain of many more people and that can happen when uh, it is produced in large number and it is available to large number of people so my question is that at one point of time you said that uh, you know industry is not supportive for this kind of products so can you please throw some light that why uh, multiplication of such products is uh, not there and not possible or difficult? So it will reduce the pain of so much many more people. Uh, yes, Dr. Deshpande. Uh, I am with you totally that the need for proliferation of these uh, pain reducing innovations is to be done as fast as possible. Uh, National Aviation Foundation is the one which hosts, uh, which uh, has got these technologies with them, and they put it in the open um, category for anybody to pick up and do it, paying some royalty to the innovator. And they made it simple so easily. Few came forward, but somehow, whatever the reasons they have, they could not get it. Um, all the innovations do not give them a good investment. As I mentioned, two reasons why it is not really attractive to the uh, normal uh, entrepreneurs is that firstly the requirement is a village may take two or three and that's all they don't ask again for so many reasons so many years and the geographically spread market and the value is very much and the margins are very less because you make it costly they don't buy at all so the problem in affordability and the cost of marketing cost of transaction is is not very comfortable for the uh, entrepreneur so now the only answer is decentralized manufacture. The MSMEs, the cottage industry, local mechanics, that's what we have to do. Now to, to do that, someone has to give the technology to them and bit of training and understanding, and they will do it. So who is going to do this? You know, system government doesn't do it. Someone has to do this. The information is available. Want some of us to come forward, NGOs, our local colleges, or somebody. Identify the unmet needs is the first suggestion I made is that un unmet needs identified, then fit these solutions already available, give it to the people around you, and then that's the way each institution, each uh, you know, the public private sector, uh, uh, wherever they are located, if they do it, perhaps your dream will come true faster. And I'm I'm waiting uh, as much as you are waiting for the dissemination to the people. <laughs> Uh, I would like to continue the same question, a uh, little more related to finance, in the sense that the economy or the production sector is always driven by demand. So if there is more demand, there will be more multiplication. And if there is a more multiplication, then there will be a reduction in the cost of production. So everything looks very win-win. I mean, when I heard your talk, it, it's really very heartening that there are such beautiful uh, ideas. So what prevents industry? Why industry is not coming? There is a lot of market. Yeah, uh, I think um, no, I'll request you to, since you are so simple uh, items, I request you to. Yeah, looks like we have lost the signal from Brigadier Ganesham. Oh, so. Okay, okay, fine. Yeah, so maybe we can. Yeah, we can wait for some time. Maybe we can. Yeah, we can wait for. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think he's uh, there, perhaps. Yeah, he is there. Yes. Okay. Uh, okay. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, Brigadier, we are very sorry. We did I we could not hear you for past one minute or so. I am very sorry about it. Only you uh, are doing something, are... but we could not hear. Yeah. All right. Okay. Very uh, sorry. Problem. Yeah. Oh, what I was saying is that um, um, uh, we have to ask the corporates why they are not doing it, like CII or MSME or something. Ask them and convince them that this is the need of the people and the problem exists, the solution exists. You just have to. Uh, do that, connect that. And uh, if the system is, system is not coming forward, I think all of us take uh, initiatives in our respective fields, uh, what we can do. Technology is available. NIF can give, and I can help in giving technology to them at the cheapest cost. Some benefit goes innovator, but society getting benefit is important. I am certainly invite all the views, but across the board, the uh, uh, due to the Non least profits and margins, corporate doesn't come, investors don't come, okay. but we can make it as a part of CSR where they said, Okay, each industry which makes money also makes few unmet needs and distribute it. Even this is uh, like Tata did filter and other things, you know, swatch filter, and that may be another way to uh, ensure that things reach. But I love all your suggestions and your concern. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much for your answers. Thanks. Yeah, thank you very much, Professor Deshpande. And uh, so I, I saw a hand raised earlier by Professor Vijay Kumar Sahu. So, Professor Sahu, would you like to ask a question now? Yeah, thank you, uh, Vinit. Uh, it was a really wonderful talk. It uh, you know it was very heart touching. Uh, you know, I just wanted to make uh, first one comment that we, what we know is uh, the you know need is the mother of uh, you know invention. Uh, so that that means what I understand now that uh, most of the inventions that was done earlier, the most important you know inventions, I think there was some pain was involved that we never mentioned. Okay, so that was just a comment. And uh, my actual question is like uh, we always want that in our educational systems, starting from schooling, that you know let the students should be you know uh, very innovative. So, do you think that it is necessary that we should uh, make our students feel uh, about the pains of the people or, uh, you know, the need of people to become, you know, to make them, you know, you know, like, uh, you know, to become uh, more like innovative or something like that? So, what, what is your uh, like uh, comments on this? Yeah, that's uh, how uh, you have hit the nail. Uh, as I mentioned in the innovation ecosystem slide. We have 26 crore children in the schools and they are geographically spread across the country and it's not a small number. And we, they live in the problems. They feel the pain around them. They need not be taught what is pain. If you're talking about urban, it's different, but most of the children, 90% of the children are in the villages. They feel the pain, they suffer the pain, they live with the pain. They're frustrated. They want to do something about it. But nobody is asking them, nobody is answering them, nobody is mentoring them, nobody is helping them. So their creative solutions, I'm sure there are many, they are hidden. And as a society, we are missing all that fresh creativity of young children who are in the problems and have something to suggest. So my suggestion, uh, you, you made a very good observation about capturing children creativity should be a regular activity of society. And ask them, you have a, you want to suggest something? He said, yes, take it. You know, our volunteers, I'll give our personal experience, have gone to various government schools in the Andhra Pradesh and Telangana. Ask them to write down their ideas. We took the sheets, for 50,000 such ideas, we have sent it for the National Innovation Foundation when they were conducting Ignite competition. And out of them, 34 children got President of India Awards. And they got it because uh, uh, the ideas were so, uh, you know, came out of some way. As a girl, uh, I don't know how much time we have. Can I quote an example? A, a girl, her mother is a maid servant. And uh, she used to work in the Bartan Manjana Sabgarme. Father is not there. And they both live on the, only that particular income. And the, the mother comes in the evening and she was upset. So the daughter asked, What's happened, mom? She says, Every day she comes back getting all the bollocking from the, her master, master woman. So 
the child helpless what to what to do so we went to the school we asked her to give some uh, idea she wrote down this problem and she gave a solution at the bottom and the solution she says is that make a device sir where my mother can put a button there after washing there should be two lights green and red light if a red light goes she will wash it again if a green light she doesn't this girl didn't know how to help my mother but she has idea in her mind she can address the pain of her mother and we sent that idea of course uh, it's got a national recognition and we made that mother and child both walk to rashtrapati bhavan whatever it is but what i'm saying is there is tremendous number of ideas i can share but it's not the time one of you can uh, uh, communicate with me i'll tell you the kind of children creativity and dr sahu i uh, can't agree with you more there is a tremendous need to look into children creativity of the nation uh, just one more clarification i just want to have like you said you know one would feel the pain to you know innovate something but uh, is it like uh, without having any idea just uh, feeling pain can one be just uh, you know uh, be in you, you know uh, can have some kind of innovation so if you don't have ideas just like there could be many people who are very kind and can feel pain easily of others but do you think they can also innovate something yeah um, no, I, i didn't mean i did not generalize that everybody who feels the pain will have a solution i didn't say that the issue is to find a solution whether you or a group or somebody else knowing and feeling is essential in our view that's what we learned from the grassroots innovation these two facts are very essential and without that we miss something solution may not be the best now having observed the pain around you understood the pain by feeling it internalizing it what you want to do is left to you like there is so much pain in you you can't resist every day so you said let me do something ho sakta hai ya aap kisi dost se share karoge bolta hai yaar ye kuch takleef de raha hai can you do something about it so you may share with them or a group of people can do it but you will get into some action because the pain is bothering you because you internalized it that's the story okay thank you very much Yes. Uh, so uh, we have a hand raised by Professor uh, Navinder Singh. So uh, you can ask your question. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Brigadier. This is a very nice uh, vyakhyam, vyakhyam, and uh, we thoroughly enjoyed. So uh, my question is uh, related to this uh, village uh, city connection. Uh, I generally go to villages in the periphery of Ahmedabad, and I have seen uh, the, the that uh, they are generally farmers, and uh, so. so the thing is that in uh, especially in uh, in gujarat uh, the farming is uh, organic i mean they uh, so uh, basically i mean they did not use pesticides and such like uh, for example uh, so so the organic stuff is generally uh, that is prevailing in the village in the farming sector now the question is that my uh, question is uh, this organic produce Uh, now in the apmc markets actually and then this from apmc markets the multinational companies take this uh, organic produce and then they put their stamp and the same thing in the city uh, uh, they sold uh, they sell at a very large price maybe 10 times so if i for example i just buy for example chana so now the season of chana and i go so they give it some uh, 10 rupees 20 rupees kilo very cheap actually and uh, now the thing is that if uh, if there is a direct connection direct uh, i mean uh, sort of if the farmers come from the village directly to the city and then they sell they say uh, trust us generally the city people are very generous in that and uh, they prefer the people in the city they are on the average richer and they prefer the organic food actually i mean they can spend money on the organic food now if the farmers directly come to the city and then uh, definitely they will have profit because the, the the profit which the multinational companies are getting i mean the 10 times larger price so the, definitely the farmers will have uh, this thing so my question is uh, in your organization uh, are there steps taken in this direction where the city city and village uh, connection uh, where you take you may you take the village people to the city or make them aware that this is a route where you can directly go farmers can directly go to the city and then you can directly sell the, your product and you can have a huge profit i mean are there some steps taken by your uh programs uh, you have programs like that uh, uh, thank you mr navin that this i think the question is uh, is all pervasive everybody is asking the same question why not from farm to the table or something like that going on so many um, initiatives have come up 
you know, uh, we have, after walking so much in the villages and uh, understanding them a bit by listening to them, I feel a bit differently about this markets. I would like to share this because you have asked a question. You have to, you have to listen to me. You can't help it now. Right. So the issue is um, the farmer is expert is expert in his in his field of cultivation. I don't think we can replace him. We cannot, and we we do not even try because we fail. So let him be the best in his area. Let him do the production. Let him do the what are the challenges he faces. And if he has some time to rest, let him rest and relax, or do something else, because he has to again he has to continue the activity. The farming is one part farmer does. Farm business is second part, which farmer need not do. But what you say is, if he doesn't do it, he won't get the share. Proper. So the issue is, who, who does the farm business is not important. Issue is, how does farmer get his fair share? That is the issue. No, but that is the issue, not the agencies. Now the farm business which is purely money, humans, regulation, deals with this, and farmer is not good at any of them. He's not good at money, he's not good at market, not regulation, doesn't understand the tricks of the trade, nothing he knows about it. But still you want him to come and uh, hang himself in the open where he has no place in the market yard. Sub story, sub is good. And he goes back with total losses after charging. So whereas marketing is a professional job, can be done by all of us, our children do MBA. There are so many people who want to invest in that and let them handle it professionally. And we must tell the children that be ethical and give fair share to the farmer because if he has not produced, he would not survive here. Yeah, I agree. Instead of loading that guy, making a farmer a superman to learn everything. You know, we have a small company of 25 lakhs. We have finance separate, marketing separate, you know, all this separate. But you want this farmer to become a superman. How can he do that? Yeah, I've been from farming community, I've been in the village. So this is my view, but I respect what you said. A lot of people are doing it, not with very, not a great success. Just one minute I will take, because uh, there is a uh, example, the mango farmers in Ahmedabad. So in the season, uh, in the summer season, so it's a mango season. And uh, sometimes directly the farmers come. So there is a Ahmedabad heart and all. So there are special places where the farmers directly come. And then uh, this example is there, the mango, uh, the, they brought mango directly and the farmers and uh, very, uh, without any carbide. Uh, at a reasonable price so so maybe i, I understand the problem cannot be resolved at a large scale but a little little small small things uh, where the city village interaction can be enhanced it may profit a farmer but um, i'm not saying that completely make a transition that farmer will be a seller also and he will be doing a farmer also i mean that, that is impossible people one cannot do uh, multiple jobs uh, demanding jobs and so uh, thank you very much. I mean, I, I really liked you, your way, Kim, and uh, thanks a lot. I, maybe some other question. Like, thank, thank you. Ask. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much, Professor Navinder Singh. So, uh, uh, we will just see if there are any questions on the WebEx platform or not. And uh, once, uh, so it seems like uh, we can go to the uh, questions. We can take the questions from YouTube. So what I will do is that I will read out the questions and I will name the person who have asked you the question and you can answer these questions. Okay. So the first question uh, is by uh, Professor Bhala Shivraman and he would like to ask that uh, uh, in UK there is a program called Dragon's Den where small innovations by people of all age groups are presented to investors and the decisions to fund that idea or whether not to fund that idea uh, is taken at that moment. So, can something be tried here in India? Welcome. The idea is the man who presents will be presenting the local language. Who will listen to him? When you make a platform, common platform for a diverse nation like ours, so you have seen who are the people who made it. If you are prepared to listen to him and understand his own language, don't say pitch in one minute, fast pitch, you have no time. And all. That, they can't see the pressures. You, go, you, you must be very clear that you are listening to someone. In fact, you must go to village and listen. I'm, I'm with it. Why should he be called to do it? Of course, webinar is there. 
but they will not do the format you suggest. You you listen to him and then make a decision. You are welcome to do so because you are a wise person. You have resources. But what we do is come come and speak in English and do slides. Two minutes, no extra. Is not available. Poor provide business plan. We will really give business plan. What does he know about it? So please, please, please understand whoever is a kind of that person who asked question that we have to respect the person as he is. Don't try to make him to our level and uh, try to pull them and you miserably face, then you reject him. The humiliation is intolerable. Unless, if not help them, let's not humiliate them. Leave him where he is happy wherever he is. But we have no right to humiliate anybody in the village because we know more than them or we have money to give them. That makes you no better person if you have a money. You got to respect everyone. If that morals, ethics are there, any platform is welcome because we are looking for the knowledge of the nation, for the nation and for the people of the nation. Where is the problem? Welcome. Any suggestion? Okay. And uh, so the next question is by Professor Neeraj Jastogi. And uh, he would like to ask that uh, uh, what should one do if she has, uh, sh he or she has ideas but no resources or doesn't know how to go ahead with the idea and convert into it into an innovation? That is, there is an idea, but there are a lack of resources or what should they do in that situation? I think uh, I, I forgot the name of the person, but thank you very much for this question. We have crores of people like that. In our country, I'm not talking about crores of people. They have saw the problem around them and they have an idea. Now they want to see whether that can work or not. He's in a village, he's in a house, in this town, he's in the city's urban street. What do we do? How do we reach him? Do we have a system where anybody has an idea can walk into a place and say, well, this is I have. Please listen to me. And if it appeals to you, accept it or throw me out. We have no system like that. Neither we have the informal people nor for the formal people. We have millions and millions of people in cities in the country boiling with ideas. They want to do something. The system is lacking, my dear friends. Let's create one. If not, let's create one by each institute can create wherever they are. NGOs can create, all seniors can create for the geography you feel around. It's a need of the hour. And I think the question has been very aptly put. Thank you very much, my dear friend, for asking such question. No, I can't hear you. Vinita, you are muted. Yes. So he has a comment as well. It's not a question, but a comment that uh, if fertilizers are used in the form of fine or very ultra fine aerosol, so that would mean that the surface area uh, to volume ratio, ratio is very high. So the wastage of fertilizers can be reduced significantly. So would you like to say something on that? It's, it's just a comment. I'm not expert. I will not. Uh, I will not dare to answer the question because firstly, fertilizer itself is not recommended chemical fertilizers. Uh, we must try and slowly forget discussion on chemical fertilizers. And therefore, I'm sorry. I'm not competent to answer this question. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay, so there's another question by Pradeep Chauhan. And uh, so there's a question that how do you preserve IPR rights of innovator while transferring technology to MSME industry for mass production? Uh, thank you for this question. You see, every innovation is not patentable. And, and when, even if it is patented, it is so simple that replication is very easy. Ek bar dekh liya, copy kar sakte. So the, the poor guy, the innovator, even cannot defend it, even if he has a patent. He doesn't know where to go, how to do it, and doesn't have resources to do it. So patent for these people is more of a um, symbolic and respectful event, but not really if they can utilize it or they can take benefit out of it. But what Policy Honeybee Network and National Innovation Foundation have evolved over a period of time is that uh, on behalf of the innovator, we speak and have a negotiation with the entrepreneur that this is the value of the innovation. This is the kind of market we have. So how much you would like to give an advantage if patent has to be sold to them? They can take the patent by paying some one-time amount to him, or they can pay some royalty for each. So various kind of arrangements, we can have a joint venture if they want to have it. 
So we have various kind of arrangements depending on the case by case and the, the kind of entrepreneurs responses come up, then we'll connect and finally we see that some benefit goes to the innovator. Okay, okay. Uh, so um, I do not see any other questions from the YouTube platform. And uh, so uh, that concludes our question and answers. Yes, yes. Uh. Yeah, okay. Uh, yes, ma'am, go ahead. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Brigadier Ganesham. Thank you very much for this uh, very eye-opening talk. And uh, we learned a lot from your experiences. Uh, I actually like the, the word, uh, the use of the word some Vedana. And I, when you talked about uh, it so many times that I, I, I thought about uh, about the word for asamvedan shil. I like some, but some people who are really not um, so, uh, having this uh, feeling. So my question was like in India, there are many people who think that in the Western society, people want to work, uh, make things to, uh, or do innovations to make life comfortable. In India, if somebody wants talk, somebody wants to talk about uh, giving comfort to others, it is not always welcome, and then sometimes it is discouraged in the name of tradition or the age-old custom should continue, even if it causes pain. Um, and doing things with machine is is like considering that people are becoming lethargic. So uh, my question is: Did you encounter any such challenges on your way uh, by you know if somebody makes uh, an innovation innovation, then other people? counter it saying that this is not the right thing to do and we should continue with the old age old tradition. That's my question. Actually, um, it, it's all in the words. It's all in the words. When you say you reduce the pain, there won't be complaints. But when you say there's a comfort for comfort, there'll be complaints. Because comfort can be a desire, may not be a need. But pain is an unmet need. The way we express, the way we really address, that's what people perceive around us. When, you know, Westerners, they invest on providing comfort to the people. And they, their comfort means desires, not needs. And in India, we had to first address the needs, then go to the desires. So I didn't find any problem. And in fact, we told you the number amount sold by us without any proper investment or nothing, we could manage to sell quite a lot. And we are selling quite a lot in Andhra and Telangana. We did not focus outside the market because we don't have that kind of a reach in terms of finances. But I find uh, all these innovations, which are the unmet needs or something address the pains of the people and not found any resistance. Even the herbal solutions, I found the amazing people buying that. We have certain things like Sri Thailand, it reduces the pain, it reduces any pain in the body. Reduces, reliefs, doesn't remove it. And people buy, in, they come again and again and then buy for the last 10 years, they're buying it, just external application. So I, I've not tried it. Nanditaji, and while your apprehension is properly expressed by you, I did not find any problems for disseminating these innovations, especially when they relieve people from pain. That's very heartening. That's very, really, very heartening to hear that people uh, appreciate the, and they don't, you don't feel any resistance from any part of the, uh, of the villagers, uh, any, any society. That's great. Thank you very much for your answer. Thank you, ma'am. So uh, I will just make a last call if if, uh, if uh, there are any questions on the. WebEx platform and then if, uh, yeah, okay. Okay, so seems like we have uh, covered all the questions from the WebEx platform as well as our uh, YouTube uh, platform. And uh, so I would like to thank you very much for uh, so nicely and diligently taking all, all of our audience's questions. And uh, so I would like to uh, pass uh, uh, the um, the stage, uh, means pass the mic to Dr. Manas Shamal. Uh, to bring this session to a closer. Uh, thank you, Vinit. Uh, friends, it is uh, an honor to propose a vote of thanks uh, to all who have helped us in making today's backhand possible. 
First of all, I, uh, on behalf of PRL, would like to thank uh, today's speaker, Brigadier Ganesham, for accepting our invitation and agreeing to share his knowledge and experiences with us on this very auspicious occasion of Republic Day. Sir, we are truly thankful to you for throwing light on the various grassroots problems and showcasing us the various innovations being done by the villager, the farmer, the school kids, even uneducated people to solve these uh, problems. The examples you showcase us are truly amazing, and I must say that they are highly motivational. On behalf of all of us, I can possibly say we all thoroughly enjoyed uh, your talk. It was truly a thought-provoking, motivational, and inspiring uh, talk. Once again, I thank you for your time, for sharing your knowledge and ideas with us. I also thank you, Professor Anil Bharadwaj, Director PRL, Professor Pallam Raju, Dean PRL, and all the Vakshan Committee members for their continuous uh, efforts to make this Vakshan series uh, keep going. Uh, finally, on behalf of PRL, I extend uh, uh, our special thanks to all our participants and panelists who have joined us through WebEx on YouTube platforms. Thank you all for your time. This we come to the uh, very end of today's uh, you know uh, chapter of PRL Kamrut version. Uh, see you next week with another eight interesting version. Until then, on behalf of PRL, goodbye to you all. Stay safe and stay well. Have a great evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much.